So Yahoo Finance reported yesterday that inflation is starting to drop like a rock rather than a feather, leading to outright deflation in some areas of the economy, according to Fundstat Tom Lee. A slowdown in rising inflation would be welcome news to investors given that the stock market has sold off 5% since Federman, Federal Chairman Jerome Powell hawked his speech at Jake Jackson Hole last week. Powell reiterated that the Fed's resolve to tame inflation by being aggressive with interest rate hikes and a reduction to its $9 trillion balance sheet. Now, this could be just him talking a tough game, but it's it, a lot of observers think that that is 100% necessary in order for people to, or in order for people not to get ahead of the Fed and show who's boss, so to speak. Me personally, I think the Fed tightening rates further or ratcheting up that tightening, um, we'll say, you know, another 75 basis points, maybe a full basis point and everything like that. If they're not careful, they could be tightening us, tightening up interest rates into a recession and cause a bit of stagflation. So I'm a little bit concerned about that, especially with how much prices have, have uh, how much inflation rather has fallen in, in the last month, especially around gas prices, especially around China's experiencing its own economic crisis and the rest of the world experiencing an economic crisis. Because even if you don't like it, the Fed really does bolster the rest of the world. Like the United States does. We're like the biggest consumer of everything as the United States goes, generally speaking, the rest of the world follows. And so by the Fed tightening its own rates, other major central banks are also doing the same. So I worry about that. I worry about that. And it's, it's not a huge worry. I don't worry about it like, you know, it might get a little hyperbolic every once in a while. All right. I'm not going to say they don't, you know, talk a big game about it. But I'm not super concerned about it like this is going to happen now and everything like hair on fire kind of stuff i'm not i'm not there at least not yet we'll have to see how september plays out or rather we have to see how august played out in september but let's continue on so the market currently expects another outsized 75 basis point rate hike from the fed at its omic meeting in late september which 75 basis points means 0.75 percent if inflation cools and is less sticky than most ex- expect, it could change the Fed's current interest rate hike trajectory, ultimately leading to a faster pivot towards a pause in rate hikes. Given all the sayings and things that happened with the Federal Reserve over the last few weeks, I don't think they're going to not raise rates. In fact, they'll probably stick to the 0.75 basis points, but we still will see. And if they don't, though, it would be a boon for risk assets, which have been stymied in recent months by fast-raising interest rates. According to Lee, inflation is quickly cooling. Quote, 42% CPI components are declining from recent highs, which equals deflation, Lee said, adding that five of the nine U.S. regions saw outright deflation in July on a month-over-month basis. These five regions represent 49% of GDP. Leading inflation indicators like used auto prices, airfares, real estate, and real estate, suggest many other components of CPI could start falling outright, according to Lee. There are many counterpoints to suggest inflation could fall faster than consensus expects. This, in turn, would change the path of Fed policy. Arguably, the inflation swaps the markets are already reflecting this, hence the lower levels of implied inflation, Lee explained. Now, digging into the actual components, Lee highlighted that commodity prices like gasoline, lumber, and wheat are falling like a rock, as are electronics, meats like chicken and beef, and clothing. At the same time, though, used cars and vehicles, airfare, durable goods are also starting to fall like a rock, and history has shown that rent and housing costs will soon, will soon follow, according to Lee's notes. With the view that inflation is quickly falling, reiterated this call for a second half rally in the stock market that could ultimately drive up the S&P 500 to new highs by year end. Quote, bottom line, we see the second half rally thesis intact, Lee concluded. Now, Yahoo Finance also reported yesterday on a conversation with one of Charles Schwab's top strategists. The Federal Reserve will only start cutting interest rates when it's worried about U.S. economic weakness with a natural fall in inflation unlikely to be enough to make its pivot. This is where our thinking is. The brokerage chief investment officer, Liz Ann Saunders, said markets need to start focusing on economic data 
other than monthly consumer price index reports. Quote, the only reason the Fed would have a green light to pause or lessen the aggressive path of rate hikes would be a more significant weakness in the economy, not just peak in inflation. It's important to understand why. There have been observers over the last decade that were extremely worried that when the next economic fallout happens, when the next recession happens, you can quibble whether we're in a recession or not. If we're in a recession, it's the mildest of recessions. So another major recession, okay, a major one, that the Fed would not have tools to help fight the recession. And that would make the recession prolonged and 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 ugly okay and so part of the reason why they're saying look at of things other than the consumer price index for the fed to pivot is because the increase in interest rates are seen as a way to take some of those tools back and strengthen the fed's ability to respond to a serious recession continuing on though the fed has raised interest rates this year as it tries to tame soaring prices with inflation running close to a four decade high However, the central bank has signaled that it would soften its approach if there's evidence that the U.S. economy is weakening. Raising rates have hit consumer demand and housing activity levels, making economic contraction more likely. Market's next opportunity to gauge the economy comes on Friday with August job numbers. Saunders said that the positive report on August job numbers due out tomorrow will reflect economic strength and is likely to encourage the Fed to continue raising rates. Quote, If you continue to see a strong labor market data that in turn gives a green light to the Fed to continue on their aggressive path, she said. So this is what it means for you. Borrowing gets more expensive. Okay. Every time this Fed raises interest rates, your ability to take on debt gets more expensive. That tamps down demand. And the the thinking goes, if it's more expensive to borrow and that makes, makes it more expensive to borrow, more expensive to do expansions on debt, then demand will fall. And demand falling will help lower prices. For average working Americans, okay, what this could mean is a continued fall in housing prices. Or, absent that, depending on the market you're in, a retraction in the level of growth. Because when interest rates are low, it is very easy for investment banks and investment firms such as BlackRock to leverage their already existing capital into more debt to buy up more capital. And that is why we saw things such as, uh, such as the market in Atlanta, shout out to Travis Scott of our community, BlackRock itself buying up 20% of the market. If it's too expensive to make borrowing, then BlackRock and other firms could actually start selling off some of their properties that they bought up in the last two years. So they could actually see a reduction in their portfolios, which means cheaper house prices for everybody else. But when those numbers come out, we'll put up a short real quick, talk about it, talk about a little bit of thoughts. Shorts go up on YouTube, check them out. And uh, we'll be here to talk about it in the following week. But we need to continue on. And we need to continue on with talks about labor in the US economy. So CNN reports that the U.S. economy shrank in the first half of the year. Consumer sentiment plunged amid high inflation, an unrest overseas, and some of the biggest names in businesses have cut thousands of jobs. But America's labor market hasn't skipped a beat. U.S. employers announced just 20,485 layoffs in August, the lowest year-to-date total since 1993, according to data released today from outplacement firm Challenger, Gary, and Christmas. A separate report from the Labor Department revealed that the initial jobs claim for the week ended in August 27th fell to 232,000, a drop from 5,000 from the previous week's levels, which was revised downward by 6,000 claims. Initial claims are now at their lowest levels in two months. Recent employment data, including the July's July's job report and labor turnover survey, have defied analyst and economist expectations. In July, employment growth was expected to slow to around 250,000 jobs. Instead, 528,000 jobs were added and available jobs surged to 11.2 million. All in all, this means that we are in a labor shortage. And that gives labor an advantage. So use it. Parlay your skills into a better paying job. Now is the time. Okay. Quote. 
The labor market isn't just running hot. It's like a burning inferno, said Megan Green, global chief economist for Kroll Institute and a senior fellow at Brown University. The hot job market complicates matters even further for the Federal Reserve. The Fed views the current ratio of two job openings for every job seeker as a potential driver for higher wages. That, in turn, can lead to higher prices and keep demand inflation elevated. They shouldn't care. I made a video about this. Go check it out. It's called uh, They Want You Desperate on YouTube. We talked about it last week a bit, but but long story short, oh no, that way of thinking. Honestly, demand inflation due to people having jobs and actually being able to be productive members of society, feeling good, having higher pay, etc., is good inflation. It means things people are on the come up. It means that people are improving, having their lives improved. When it's supply driven, when it's goods and services being not having enough supply in the market to suck up that demand, when it's investors pumping up demand artificially by buying up stuff like houses, when it's people not investing in things that people need driving up inflation, driving up demand, which is driving up inflation, or tamping down on supply, which is driving up inflation, that's bad inflation. There are good and bad inflation. We have both right now, and the Fed shouldn't care about the employment side of it. They don't really have the tools to care about to do things much on the supply side of it, all right? But they shouldn't care about it, and they shouldn't be saying things like what we covered last week about making unemployment go up to 5 6% to take a lot of the slack out of the economy and tamp down on inflation by making millions of people unemployed. It is disgusting that that's the kind of thinking that they have, and they need to be held to task, taken to task over it. No reason why that should be the case. People like you and I should not bore the cost of inflation by having us be thrown out of our jobs and making us desperate and making us potentially destitute. And I hope everybody agrees with me. Right, left, center, doesn't matter. You should agree with this. Continuing on with the news roundup, though. Tomorrow's federal jobs report will be closely watched for signs that employment growth is slowing. Economists estimate that about 300,000 jobs will be added in August a considerable drop from July and the lowest monthly gain since April of 2021. Now, less than one in three unemployed workers has been jobless for 15 weeks or more, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows, a level not seen since before the Great Recession other than a brief blip in 2020 when the labor market began to surge after the pandemic lockdowns eased. Economists continue to chew on who these missing workers are and what is keeping them from out of the workplace. They speculate the workers are being kept out of the labor market for things like lack of childcare, health-related concerns, potential restrictive immigration policies, and early retirements. There are also plenty of unknowns, including the influence of discouraged or marginally attached workers or those who are suffering lingering conditions of chronic COVID. A recent study from the Brookings Institute estimated that long COVID is keeping potentially 4 million people out of the labor force. Despite broader economic uncertainty, the scales remain heavily tipped towards the worker. Good, said Bonnie. Dowling is a co-author on a recent McKinsey report that sought to address the stark shortage in workers and what may be keeping younger employees on the sidelines. Aspects such as workplace flexibility, meaningful work, and compensation were cited as some of the key wants, according to the report. Quote, I don't think that many of them will come back into the labor market without the promise of those needs being met, she said. And if they come in with that promise and they aren't met, they've made it clear that they're willing to leave it again. We have a, to fundamentally rethink how we're working, she added. This is what the Great Reset ended up actually being. COVID exposed how much people on the lower end of the economic stratum are important to the functioning of the U.S. economy to everybody else's well-being. They are pivotal to the entire economy working. And by people calling them heroes and giving them incentive pay to keep working so things could stay open and you could get your groceries and your Mai Tais and whatever the hell else, you know, at your restaurants that were still open during COVID, that made people feel their actual worth for the first time in probably decades. Not only that, it exposed how badly they were being treated since and in that time, especially by entitled Karens talking about how can this restaurant be closed? It's like two o'clock on a Friday and I need my grub and taking it out on a worker. 
especially when workers were just trying to like not get COVID, keep food on their table and trying to get their, their customers to wear a mask. Nobody wants to put up with that shit. Not a single person. I don't care who you are. You don't want to put up with that kind of bullshit. Try working on a cook line for eight hours a day. Try working as a service desk worker eight hours a day and deal with just the level of vitriol that self-entitled oh no levy at people on a day-to-day basis and you tell me that it's worth you know 925 an hour it's not especially when we know that these people are needed for everybody else's lives to function that is probably the primary reason why this is happening now insider india reporting provides more context to this as well So workers want higher wages and it's showing in job searches. Job seekers are turning their search efforts away from jobs paying $15 an hour in favor of those paying $20 an hour, according to a new August report from Indeed's hiring lab. Again, people know what they're worth and they're going for it. The share of searches on Indeed mentioning $20 an hour has overtaken the percentage of searches containing $15 an hour, the report found. As of mid-August, the number of Indeed queries mentioning $20 has grown 35% year over year, while searches listing $15 an hour have fallen 57.3% in the same period. The reversal persists against the backdrop of a hot labor market emboldening workers to ask for more, as well as elevated inflation, but all but requiring them to do so. In addition, year over year wage growth for private employees in June and July was 5.2%. Quote, American workers haven't seen wage growth like this in well over a decade, maybe a couple of decades. Secretary of Labor Marty Walsh recently told Insider. The big raises, though, dampened by inflation, likely also encourage job seekers to boost their wage expectations. Though job seekers want higher pay, they're not always getting it. A July survey from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York found that workers want almost $73,000 to take a new job, but they're actually only being getting around 61000 